ex-commissioner present at Pali to resolve rivers crisis and reach how to move to Nubu threatened Fubara into signing peace deal with Winky. Welcome to the news and thank you for tuning in to listen. Please subscribe to our channel to get notified when we post hot juicy news updates. Please click on the notification bell. A former commissioner for water resources and river state, David Briggs, has alleged that President Bola Tsirimbo subtly threatened River State Governor Sir Simlalahi Fubara into signing the peace deal with his predecessor, Nyesom Wiki, at the presidential Villa Abuja on Monday. Briggs, who was spoke Briggs, who was spoken to journalists who was speaking to journalists in River State on Wednesday, said, and I quote, Governor Fubara signed the resolution on that duress following an alleged indirect threat issued by President Tunumbu before handing the governor the document to sign. The former commissioner said he was at the villa with the other Rivers elders who were equally invited, hence he witnessed firsthand what transpired at the venue. He said President Tunumbu threatened that there will be consequences should Governor Fubara refuse to endorse and abide by the government document which he described as a presidential proclamation. Briggs said, and I quote, I was there, so I am a witness, and what I say is primary, not secondary. We were invited to a meeting, but that was not a meeting. What happened is that Mr. President walked in with a written resolution, addressed us, and declared that what he had in his hand is a presidential proclamation and emphasized the fact that he is the president of the Federal Republic of Nigeria. Therefore, he can whip up, he can whip up anybody who dares to say no to what he's saying and would face the consequences. That is not democratic. That, in a simple layman's word, is a threat. He wrote the resolution but refused to read it, but handed it to Dr. Peter Orderly to read and interject. And each time he interjects, he comes with a subtle, polite and smiling insult. And thereafter, he asks the governor to speak. Let us get it very clear. If you are in the position of the governor, what will you do? Get up, say no to Mr. President, and with that kind of subtle but energetic threat, the former commissioner disclosed that most rivers people who were present at the meeting, including Adokiye Amasimaka, were shocked at the president's attitude and decided to ask questions. That being the case, one of us asked him, President Turimbu, a simple question. To be specific, Adokiye Amasimaka asked him, You said Sim should do this. Governor should do that. You have not said what the 27 assembly members that affected from PDP to APC without consulting their constituency and constituent what they should do. And of course, you can see the situation. The president's reaction was very clear and simple, but very dangerous. It was a concrete intimidation to say he's the leader. In fact, he withdrew from his seat and said, I am the leader of the APC in Nigeria, and you are telling me when babies are born into my family, I should ask them to go? No, they can't go. We have welcomed them and I want anybody who was there to contradict what I said. Recall that Governor Fubara and BK, Minister of the Federal Capital Territory, have been at larger head over control of the state political structure since October. A development gave rise to President Tinubu's intervention on Monday, where all parties agreed to an eight-point resolution signed by Fubara, Wiki, and all the river stakeholders. Some of the resolution had directed that all impeachment proceedings against the governor should be dropped, as well as masses instituted in court consequent upon the crisis be dropped, among others. Meanwhile, the State Commissioner for Information, Joe Johnson, had in C said that Governor Fubara did not sign the peace agreement with his predecessor, Nyesom Wiki, on the duress at the presidential villa on Monday. Johnson, who spoke on Wednesday during a live appearance on Channel Television Lunchtime Politics Program, explained that he was at the meeting and he did not see the governor neg negotiate from a position of weakness. There is nothing to doubt about it. We have gone beyond the issue as to who signed and who did not sign. If you listen to the governor at the Palmo University Convocation Ceremony yesterday, he said no price is too high for peace and the Bible that, and the Bible says that we all prof we should all profess 
that we all profess says we should pursue peace with all men at all costs. I was in that meeting and for anybody to say the governor was negotiating from a weak position is an overstatement and I take an exception to it. So we are here battling and um, we, are, we are all speaking from a point of who are we going to believe? So now we are speaking from a point of uh, we are speaking from a point of we don't know who we believe. Sincerely, I don't even understand. But me, I, I like I said before, this is not a this is not something that is too difficult. This is not something that is supposed to be difficult. They approach you for an issue. You being the president. Who you are a respecter of the rule of law. Je, je, je. You direct them. Everybody go back to the constitution. What does it say? That is what I hold. But because no, you want to hold all the state on chokehold. If we look at what has been going on with the, what's it called, with um, political parties and how they have been, most of them, they don't drag um, positions where they get come off of their hands. APC is positioning themselves. They never even did show that they could do their life 2020, um, 2020 and 2024. I've been at 2025. They never know when they go do their life that time. <laughs> 2027, I mean. They never know when they go do their life 2027. They want the plan against 2027. They want to make when that time reach. They know good day as in. They are going to be, a, as in, they are going to be a stronger opposition against any party that is going to be, you know, standing against them. Now, my own be say, even if the president is forced to intervene in this matter, the constitution is there. We don't have a constitution in this country. Like I've said that document is like rubbish because if they don't treat it like rubbish, they are going to be consulting it day and night. It is going to be, it is the Bible, a constitution of any country is the Bible of that country. Meaning that anything that written that, that constitution, you don't even need to start asking what will happen. You don't, something happened, you know, don't open, okay, this particular part of the what does it read? And I read and ask, bam, that is what is going to happen. Now, so it's supposed to be. But with Nigeria, no, no. Tony B is replicating how he used certain elements in Lagos PDP and destroyed the party. And we can bury the party at national level. Tony B lacked the credentials of a Democrat. He's a dictator. And this is the somebody that they, are, that they are referring to as the father of democracy. Eh? This is the person they are replicating. He fought for democracy. Oh, shake it, oh, shake it, oh. I never see anything. You know, I never see anything. Hmm. And where is PDP na National Legal Advisor? Come out with the people and shield for bar immediately. Even PDP is weak. PDP is weak because if you ask me, had it been, CP had it been that PDP had come out to shield for bar before now and has been, you know, they have been fighting this wicked issue. Their hands are clean and they can come out and fight wicked and tell wicked. They don't fling out of uh, PDP for a very long time. You are not going to be sitting in this. As in, Fubara is not even going to be where he is today. All right, and this note, you have come to the end of the news. So thank you for tuning in to listen until I come here next time. Enjoy the rest of the day.